the question most often posed to me and my colleagues working as qualitative methodologists is the question, how many cases are enough? And the question is posed by students who are doing a interview study, for instance. And they ask, do we need 20 interviews? Do we need 15 interviews? Or maybe 10 interviews are enough. And then usually our answer is this. It depends. And that's a terrible answer. So the students will ask, well, it depends on what? And we would say, well, it depends on your research question. When you have a research question that tends towards a survey design, the question is really relevant. However, most qualitative researchers do not have a research question that tends towards a survey design. So then the idea of generalization is not an idea of generalization towards a population as we have with the survey design and with the survey methodology. So if your question is how many cases are enough, then you should think, well, do I want to generalize towards a population or do I want to say something different? So maybe the question shouldn't be how many cases are enough, but the question should be this question, which cases do I need to select? And that's a different question. And then the how many question is a question for later. And when you pose this question, which cases are enough, then probably you don't want to generalize towards a population. You want to generalize to something else, to theory. And you do this for several reasons. And you select cases for several reasons. For instance, for relevance or for variation or for deviance. So you select cases based on certain properties and not based on numbers. You select cases for variation, for instance. Now, the third form of generalization I would like to discuss is something that Gouba and Lincoln call transferability. Now, transferability means can you transfer from one sample or one case study to another sample or another case study? And they suggest that in some situations you can. How? Well, by using thick description. And when using this thick description, you focus on processes, not on tiny facts. No, you focus on processes and you can transfer these processes to other situations. But there's serious critique on this. And that critique is that you need to have knowledge about that case or about that situation. And usually you don't have it. And when you have it, you can better compare them. So do not just transfer from one case to the other, but compare from both using thick description. Another point of critique is this thick description means you are using details from one case plus theoretical processes, theory. So is it really different from inferring to theory? Maybe not. I guess not. Now, the question then is, which details do you select for the thick description? And again, that's an in inferential question, which details do you select to infer to theory or to larger processes? Which cases and which details do you select? Well, generally, qualitative researchers tend to build a theory. So the aim is to develop concepts or develop categories or properties or relation between these properties iteratively inductively. So the idea is to generalize to theory rather than to population. And Glaser and Strauss suggested in the 60s to do theoretical sampling rather than representational sampling. And in theoretical sampling, the idea is that you select a few cases. You simply just start with your research. And I often suggest to my students, start with four interviews, maybe five interviews, start doing them and collect your data start organizing them, start analyzing them bit by bit, code a bit, interpret them. And then based on these codings, based on these interpretation, based on the relations between these different texts, between the different interviews, you select new cases. But then the question arises: when do I need to stop? And for students, it's often a time constraint. But when you do real, real, real research, then still the question is, when am I done? Because this is a loop 
and this loop goes on and on and on. But when to stop? Well, that is a question I would like to discuss in the next lecture on theoretical saturation.